So my name is Lance Griff and I farm out here on the salmon track uh, south of Filer and Twin Falls and uh, uh, I direct harvested some beans this year, some black beans, uh, stand-up variety and uh, this is the header that I use, it's a MacDon D60 uh, dual drive header and uh, so what I basically did was I uh, planted a cover crop of wheat and barley mix uh, this spring on a field that I was uh, had uh, corn stalks in last year. I guess it was uh, uh, thrashing corn and uh, then baled the corn stalks off and uh, then came in and just worked the ground uh, once last fall and once this spring. And then I just drilled a, a cover crop mix of wheat and barley and then uh, the cover crop came up and I watered a few times. Uh, just to keep it going and then I sprayed it out uh, to terminate the cover crop and then I just direct uh, seeded my uh, beans uh, into the cover crop. So I just used a 22 inch spaced uh, planter um, and just uh, direct uh, seeded the beans in and then uh, by doing that then I didn't have to come back in and cultivate a dike, a dammer dike to, uh, because it's under pivot irrigation. So. I was able to just water the crop basically. I, I used um, uh, you know, a, a burned down herbicide and also um, my, uh, and then I, I did a post-emerge herbicide also uh, to get any escape weeds later on. And then I didn't have to dam or dike, didn't have to cultivate or anything. And then I was able to just come back in um, and that way I could leave the, uh, the field level and smooth. Um, one thing I probably would have done differently is after I, I planted it, I would have been nice to come in and roll the field um, to uh, push down any stones or rocks, uh, things like that, uh, just because it just helps with harvest. You know, you don't you're not breaking sickle sections and things like that as much. So um, when the, when the beans were were ripe or getting ripe, then I went out and desiccated them uh, to continue the drying process and kill any green weeds that were growing and then um, waited about 10 days and then went in and just uh, this, this header just fits right on my combine and was able to just go in and, and uh, direct harvest them. This is a dual drive sickle head. It uh, drives the sickle from both ends, which helps a lot. Um, one, one thing, it's a draper head. You can probably see that, but the drapers really help uh, delivering the material to the center of the, the header. And one nice thing about these MacDon headers is the real uh, to sickle relationship is that you can, you can adjust these, fine tune them uh, to where you're just, just bringing the crop in right on those drapers really smoothly and you can uh, you know, adjust the, the reel to, to the desired position you want it, and it really does a great job uh, delivering that crap onto the crop onto the draper and to the center and then up into the, ultimately into the combine. So it really did a great job. I was really happy with how it did. I had swath beans before using a swather, but I never um, direct harvested them like this with a combine. So I had an idea how the header would do, but um, where the material was completely dry or most you know mostly dry um, it did a great job and I would say that I don't have any more harvest loss doing it this way than if I had done it the old way we used to do it with the uh, one step pickets. I, I don't think I even want to try this without a draper head you know we had enough experience with it we've had this draper for quite a few years now and it just does such a great job and we've used it in different you know in different applications um, in different things we swath wheat stubble with it um, you know, we've, we've swathed beans with it on a swather, and so we knew what it could do. And so we were confident we could do a good job with it uh, where, the, where the beans were dry and ready to harvest. Um, I would say that the, the architecture of the bean makes a big difference. Um, I don't think I would have tried this on, on a, like a, a bean that is real viney that lays low, that lays its pods on the ground. 
but I had grown this black bean variety before and it held it held its pods off the ground very well. And so I knew that if I if it did that again um, and stood up like it did the previous year that I had experience with, that I would be able to harvest them easily with this. And it did a great job. And, and even in areas where the beans, where the soil was uh, not as good, the beans were smaller, they didn't get as tall, it still did a, a, a very good job, a respectable job and just does an even better job when you get to the areas where the beans are taller and um, uh, they're just more, there's more foliage there to help get in into the, onto the head. Yeah. Um, and one of the good things about being able to use uh, direct, you know, use direct uh, harvest methods with, with this header is that my combine, I can spread all that material out evenly. Whereas before, if I come in and, and one step them and put them in, you know, windrows that way, then my other combine, my older machines, don't have as good of a, a chaff and residue management system on it. Whereas my newer one, I can spread the whole width of the combine header. So that was a big advantage. Now I can just go back in and no-till corn or whatever crop I want to because the residue is spread evenly. I don't even have to go out there and harrow it or anything. It's, it's ready to go. It saves time and money because then I don't have to go out there and spend time and money harrowing it or oh, this is really thick, I gotta go out there and work the ground. It's already done, it's just, I can go plant into it, whatever I'm doing. Like, yeah, we've been trying to kind of figure out how we can use the beans um, in a rotation with, you know, no-till and, and improving soil health. So it's been, uh, that's one of the, we're trying to fit beans into that whole system. So when this year we direct harvested, I just went in into a cover that was terminated and uh, with my no-till drill with a coulter cart. And so the coulter is running in front of the uh, broadcast cedar. Yeah, this was on a pivot uh, planted into a uh, cover crop from the previous year, which was stubble and it came out of barley. Um, so I, I didn't have any tillage before I planted. Uh, we did spray more, but uh, I disturbed the soil less. I didn't have any problems putting on water because I didn't have any runoff. I used to have all the old material laying on top and quite a bit of residue on top. Um, So I, I didn't have to worry about any any water running off. It was taking more water. Soil health is a is a key to helping this process uh, work. Well, this is just saving uh, another trip through the field. Uh, the last the less passes you make uh, through the field, the more money you're going to put in your pocket. flex header uh, so it, it it'll flex versus the rigid uh, where it would just plow through some stuff um, we did have a little bit of problems with some residue hanging up um, from my old uh, chaffer rows um, so this year I've got another spreader on the back of my combine hoping to eliminate a lot of those problems so I have a 2166 um, case combine with the field tracker on it. Um, this is a 30 foot header. Uh, I also have a rigid 25 foot header that I, I trade one year. Um, we put some lifters on it. I don't have the finger reels. Uh, really in ideal conditions. You don't need to worry too much about the reel. It self feeds. Um, if you're in good heavy beans, it self feeds in real nice and, and you don't have that loss. Uh, you have more loss when the beans are a little thinner. Um, that was my observation this year. Um, so this 30 foot header um, kept the combine pretty full. I didn't have to worry about uh, keeping the speed up even though I was thrashing at probably three miles an hour plus. Um, it just seemed to work. Um, other thing about this header and my combine, um, this is called a field tracker. 
I have the field tracker on my combine and the field tracker on the header. So the header talks to the combine, it senses the down pressure, floats real nice and it, it laterally, laterally adjusts for any differences. Um, so it's able to hug the ground a little bit better and I don't have to worry so much about uh, the position of the header and, and where it's at uh, relative to the ground. So for direct harvesting, we want the ground as smooth as possible. Um, where we've been doing some cover crop uh, and no-till, um, that has smoothed up the ground a little bit, pretty considerable. Um, I was worried about uh, the rodents and the gopher hole, the gopher mounds. That didn't seem to be an issue this year um, with this header. Um, haven't had to worry too much about rocks. Uh, that's the other great thing about the no-till and uh, if you're not uh, going in and ripping or plowing anything, you're not turning up those rocks. So direct harvest loss, uh, rod weeding versus direct header. The rod weeder tends to bury the beams that you uh, may shatter, so you don't see that loss out on the ground. With the direct header, you see maybe, you see more of those beams laying on top of the ground um, so it may look worse than 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 the other uh, we all know that we lose some when we go in there cut the beans when they're fairly dry um, it just all depends on the year you cut the beans a little green and then you're not losing as many uh, with the rod weeder um, so who knows that's that's up for debate.